Hi guys, this is SDJRSNF88 speaking with another Model Railway Workbench update. So first of all, welcome to another instalment of Model Railway Workbench. And as you can see, there's been a few changes. Most noticeably, we now actually have a workbench. <laughs> As you've seen in my previous instalments of this series I've been sort of working uh, out of my loft on a sort of a raised section of the floor so it's really really nice to actually have a bench I can actually work on and that brings us neatly on to why this is not in the loft. This is in fact a uh, hotel room. Uh, as some of you may know I recently got a job with Railway Modeler magazine uh, down at Pico in uh, Devon and I'm working as editorial assistant. Now, of course, that's meant I've had to leave home, but I didn't want to sort of leave all my model railway items behind, so I've brought along a huge stash of uh, items for me to carry on with while I'm away during the week. So, of course, I hope the hotel, um, these hotel stays will be only temporary until I find a, a place of my own and hopefully uh, start doing a, building another model railway potentially there, but, you know, of course, that's all very distant in, at the moment. But it means I can still carry on with these like little projects. So in this video, we're going to take a look at some of these items that I've brought along and I'm currently working on. So first item, or I should say items on the workbench, are a selection of Batman and Oxford rail wagons, which I've been renumbering into WD branding. Now, what I've done with these is, uh, like a few other ones I've done previously at home, is remove the big four markings on them. Most of these started off life as a uh, big four branded wagons so we've had a couple of NE wagons and a couple of LMS wagons and I've removed their markings and added uh, some WD transfers in uh, different locations. So we'll start off with this one here. I've done two of these previously at home. This is a Oxford Rail wagon and I do apologise for the lighting but you can see it was originally an NE wagon and what I've done is I've removed the NE logo and I've put the little WD marking down there in front of the, uh, the weight marking on there. Then we come onto this larger wagon, the largest of the bunch. This is what started off life as an LMS wagon. And as you can see, I've put the WD marking in the bottom right. Uh, looking at pictures, the WD logo did tend to often appear in the bottom right, although it varied on different wagons. So I've done a good selection here. So there's some of them are in the bottom left, like on that one. Uh, some of them are on the bottom right, such as that one. And this other Batman wagon here, which is also an LMS wagon. This is a, a one two, three, four, five plank wagon. But as you can see with this one here, this is uh, a Batman NE wagon. Uh, I've put a larger WD marking on the centre door. Uh, so it really did vary and they, they're starting to come along quite nicely. Of course, uh, when I get back, when I've got uh, a spray booth, uh, I plan to give these a quick coat of matte varnish to obviously seal these transfers in. Um, as I've noticed, especially on my uh, Ammo Stores car, which I'll pop a little link at the top of the screen now. Uh, I use the same transfers on there. They do have a habit, especially the larger ones, have a habit of peeling off. So uh, when I weather these, because these will be, of course, weathered and dulled down, uh, I will obviously give it a spray of matte varnish to seal these uh, transfers in. So the idea is these wagons would have carried uh, all manner of goods. In pictures, they're carrying wood for, um, obviously, trench, um, you know, trench materials, carrying munitions, coal, obviously, for all the locomotives on the front. Uh, and uh, you know, basically any raw material used around the front. So what I might do with these is add some, I've got some sheeted loads, which I plan to put in the back of these as well. And I've also got a couple of shells, uh, or a number of shells, I should say, which will also be loaded into these. So these will also add to my ROD train. Uh, in my stock box that I've brought along with me, I've also got a Batman Any uh, cattle wagon. So the plan is to also remove the uh, markings on that and also put a little WD transfer on there as well. It's a very similar grade to this one. Uh, one thing you might have spotted is the uh, paintwork has started to come off around where I've removed the NE because this one was quite a stubborn one. Uh, but of course, as mentioned with the weathering, that will all be toned in. And I do plan to put a couple of replacement planks on here because some of those wagons that were sent to the front really did get grotty quite quickly and the planks had to be replaced. And of course, they just didn't bother repainting them. Uh, much like, of course, at the end of steam. So what I plan to do is uh, paint some of these planks into a sort of a, a pale wood colour and uh, I've, I've been meaning to sort of practice doing some wood effects with paint, so I think it'd be a good excuse to do that as well. 
So while I had the uh, WD transfers handy, I decided to get around to adding a couple to this diecast ploughing engine uh, made by Oxford Diecast. And as you can see, I've placed it on the cylinders on either side. And the reason behind this is I came across a very interesting picture while doing some research behind the uh, RD trains and their formations of uh, about, basically about traction engines and other vehicles that were sent to the front line. And there was one of these pictures showed three of these ploughing engines lined up in a field and they were all in immaculate condition. I mean, they were glossy, they were really, really shiny, so they've been really, really well polished by their crews. But all of them had WD markings on their cylinders. So I guess the reasoning behind this was they were obviously commandeered uh, by the war effort, sent to the front line, and rather than repainting them, they just simply just put WD on them and sent them out to action. Now the reason for them being used on the front line was because of their uh, winch, which is of course mounted underneath the boiler there. Now ordinarily ploughing engines, you have one at either end of the field, and they would pull a plough in between them, um, basically ploughing the field. But these drums were quite powerful and the war office realised this, the war department realised this and basically um, commandeered them to be used for pulling out tree stumps and other hard to move items um, that were basically blocking uh, crucial routes for construction projects such as roads and railways. And basically I thought it would be nice to model one of these uh, locomotives in miniature. So I saw this uh, rather nice model, this was recently released by uh, Hornby Scale Autos but of course it's, it's made by Oxford Diecast. And it's in a rather nice plain black livery, uh, quite nice and shiny, very similar to um, the ones featured in the picture. So it was a nice little simple conversion, just simply just slide the uh, WD markings on there and hey presto. So basically the plan for this model is it will be used on the back of um, a couple of my RD trains and potentially used on Amions as well as a nice little talking point. So this brings us on to one of the larger projects I've been working on, which is again a renumbering a locomotive into RD livery. So this model started off life as a Batman Robinson's 04 and I've renumbered it into RD number 1912. Now as some of you may know, there are a number of technical differences between the Robinson's 04 and the RD 280. Uh, most noticeably on this model, the lack of a Westinghouse pump on the side of the smoke box and the overall buffer heads. Now, why have I chose this model to model a RD locomotive when it is not correct and of course Batman produce a correct version? Well, two reasons. Uh, first of all, it was a really, really good price. There are a number of these in the cells uh, on various from various outlets at the moment, and I managed to pick this one up for about seventy, around seventy pounds. So it's a very, very good price. Secondly, this does depict a prototype. Now, there is of course the sole surviving Robinson's 04 on the Great Central Railway. And back last year, to mark the 100th anniversary of the end of the Great War, they wheeled her out of the shed, as she's not in steam at the moment, sadly, but she's currently undergoing overhaul. And they uh, wheeled her out, and they temporarily renumbered her into ROD number 1912, which, of course, this model depicts. So what I've gone and done is I've removed the l &E r branding from the front buffer beam, the cab sides, and the l &E r markings on the tender and basically done a straightforward renumbering like many of my other R.O.D. projects. Uh, but one thing I haven't done is repaint the buffer beams black. I've left them red as looking at pictures they left her with red buffer beams. The only thing I've still got to do on this uh, model is add the etched number plates which I've had made and they are actually in my toolbox behind me there but sadly I forgot the glue to attach them so that's something for a later date. But I'm really pleased with how it's turned out and I just thought it would be a nice little quirky model to have basically um, you know, capturing uh, that locomotive in its very very short carried livery. I think it only carried it for a couple of days before they wheeled it back into the shed and started stripping her for her overhaul. So I thought it would just be nice to you know, recreate her in model form and she'll be used on um, ROD trains much like uh, many of my other ROD locomotives. But it'd be another nice little talking point uh, for you know, videos and anybody that comes and sees her in action. So I guess that's all for this update. I hope you enjoyed uh, looking at my uh, progress on my uh, 
temporary modeling workbench from a hotel room, uh, taking a leaf out of Rod Stewart's book, <laughs> which is quite ironic considering we've just done a uh, ROD loco with Rod on the tender. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. There's plenty more projects to be getting on with. I've got a number of other kits to build, uh, wagons to renumber, figures to paint, basically plenty of things to keep me occupied on an evening. And I hope to uh, bring you more progress on those as and when I get around to doing them. Of course, in the meantime, you may have noticed I've been doing a few other videos uh, for uh, the uh, Pico YouTube channel. So uh, head on over to there and check out some of the videos I've done for them, which is of course part of my day job now. Um, which I, I still can't believe uh, and so yeah I hope you enjoy what I've been doing on there as well as what I've been doing on this channel so anyway I guess that's all for this update and this has been SDJR88 speaking and thanks for watching